most of you know that it is thanks to the love and support of this community that we were able to build a village for special needs children out in Tanzania. That village now provides a safe and loving home to nearly 200 children that were living in crisis. Most of these children are special needs, but a lot of these children were homeless and the majority have no parents or guardians in this world other than the family that this community has allowed us to create. Everything that we do is made possible thanks to partners. Those who choose to partner with our family and with it make everything that we do possible and keep our doors open for the next children who need some help or a safe and loving family home. If you'd like to hear more about our partnership programme, you can do so by visiting www.sharetanzania.com forward slash partnership. Thank you for all of the love and support, guys. We couldn't do this without you. I had a conversation with a friend of mine the other day. And whilst we were talking, he told me he had been around some very new age minded people. And they had told him that he should love his demons. And this raised a conversation and I thought it would make a very important video. Because to what degree is that true? And to what degree is that false? You see, the problem with a lot of New Age awakening, the problem with a lot of people who awaken through psychedelics or things of this nature, is that they awaken into a unity consciousness. What that means is they recognize that everything is interwoven and that everything is pouring forth from the generous heart of God. But this is not the destination. And if that is the destination, then unfortunately, often perversion is born. For Alistair Crowley, who was said to be the wickedest man alive at one point, Alistair Crowley said, do as thou will is the whole of the law, and the whole of the law is love. What had happened was through drugs, ultimately, he had awoken to the generous heart of God. And in the deception of his arrogance and the movement of the fallen ones, no doubt the demonic, he therefore believed if it comes forth from the generous heart of God, which allows all things in infinite potential and free will for life to have meaning, then it's acceptable to God. But this is not true. Not everything pouring out of the gift of free will and infinite potential is getting God's vote. And when you get into service, you will see that. So if you have gone into awakening and unity consciousness and you have not continued on the road, you have not continued to move thinking of other before self and you've come back to thinking of self as many of us can and do, then you will fall into this broken awakening, a non-Christic awakening. And of course, what we want is the Christic, the compassionate awakening, where we acknowledge all things are unified and therefore all things are sacred and must be protected. Not all things are unified, so that's a pass for me to pursue my every whim and desire and every perversion. Now, I'm not saying that this person, I don't know them, was in one awakening or the other. But what I do notice is that there is this notion that love is for everything and therefore everything is acceptable. But what I'm wanting to say is love is for everything, but not everything is acceptable. I do much deliverance work by now. It's a new part of my life and it continues to grow. And I don't know where God's leading me with it. I'm, a, I'm surrendered to what's happening. This deliverance work has seen me removing entities from people. And as I've mentioned, when the typical way of driving out an entity is performed, people manifest with shouting and roaring and screaming. And this is real. I don't think it's theater. This is a real occurrence. But what's possible is to do that but what I have arrived at with spirit and I believe this is why is that I have been anointed by spirit a gift of spirit has manifest and evolved 
whereby I can extract an entity onto my energy body and then process it myself. And I think and feel this manifest because I am around special needs children, deeply traumatized children, children who have been raped and abused. We have a girl who came in blind, deaf, cerebral palsy and a six month old baby. Just to give you an idea, these children are tormented. They are struggling, a lot of them. Children found in chains, etc. From that torment, they have entities following them. It's just the nature of it. And they can be removed. If you drive an entity out of somebody and it has no place to go, it will fight. And for a traumatized, sick child, this is not acceptable. I believe it's why Yeshua cast entities into the pigs. It was mercy. It was mercy on the man where they were to give them another body because they will come out of him more easily. And so I believe that is why it is that way so I can do that. And when I process it from me, I have sometimes the manifestation of the unsavory noises and movements. And so I am taking something from another and, and, and processing it, purifying it myself. In that work, I have learned a lot. And one of the key proponents I've learned is this. If you face off with a demonic force, then use a visual, a metaphor. You need to pick up a sword to deliver a blow to that entity to drive it out, to vanquish it. And that sword is, is the power of spirit. That's what it represents. You can't deal with entities. Spirit must do it through you. It is only by spirit's power. When you try to pick up that sword, if you are in agitation, anger, hatred, malice, you can't pick it up. You can't ye yield the power of spirit when you are in those frequencies. And therefore, when you come to a demonic presence, an entity, even if you don't agree with its behavior, perhaps it's harmed your family, your friends, perhaps it's agitating you, you must come in love. You must come in the frequency of love, for if you do not, you cannot pick up the sword. You see, the the open heart of being present is a freedom ultimately that love I'm speaking of is not the love that many know I feel because I didn't know it for a time it's it's the freedom from a personal self conditioning the love that is already pouring forward the love with which you love the love with which everybody loves is the love that they are when you constantly believe you are thoughts in your head and the identity manufactured by the mind you lose track of that you think that you own the love and you offer it to people if that identity is silenced through spiritual practice or through fasting or whatever supernatural sometimes when that identity is silenced and you become present with all your senses the love is pouring and yet there is no personal meanness that's holding it, that's sending it, that's, that's conditioning it, shall we say. And so, the love with which you love is the love that you are. That is the love I'm talking about. It's a love of, I love you and I need nothing from you. I love you, I want nothing from you. I love you, I expect nothing from you. And this love is rare inside our human lives. A lot of our unconditional love is based on the condition of relationship and it's filled and polluted with expectation, want and need. And so when you come to face an entity, you must allow spirit to come through you. And to that degree, there is a love without condition present when you go into that work. And that love is where the power of spirit comes through you. To that degree, you should love your demon, so as you have the power to deal with it, to pick up the sword and deliver the blow. But it doesn't mean that you love its behavior or what it is doing. 
but it's it's interesting that I am left with a conundrum around the demonic and I don't know as yet is there some core in a demon that's salvageable and I only say that because of experience in the world in life we have opened a home for street involved boys this is a home for boys who have been involved with drugs crime rape murder children who have been injecting heroin at the age of 10 to give you an example children who have been raped from a young age and been taught to rape from a young age very broken young men some of them not all thankfully that home made possible by this community of course and and everything we're doing has been a great learning in love for who i am for there was a time where we first opened and these children who were coming in they were unlovable the children that were already in the home who had not healed and recovered yet would want to rape the new children that you moved in it was so dark guys it was so dark and there was one boy who was filled with aggression and i'd listened to him tell me how these men had raped him he didn't realize it was bad because it was his only interaction with adults he was telling me how he'd raped people and and it was tough and he was filled with arrogance and and heaviness and aggression and anger he was hurt by it all naturally and he went to attack a child with a shovel uh, it was a garden hoe and as he went to swing it i shouted with all of my aggression uh, that i possibly could because i wasn't close enough to reach him and he dropped it thankfully and so he ran away and he hid in a room and i i followed him and i speak with this child and he bursts into tears and falls into my chest here he was sitting next to me and he starts to cry and to wail and this went on and on and on and then by the end of it this very unlovable character who i was struggling with a lot i i was truly struggling to bring love to this boy looked at me and i finally saw a little boy there was now a little boy there and he said to me in broken english will you be my father and back then many of the children still call me father from that time for i lived there and i said i'll do my best to fulfill that role whatever that looks like he tested everybody and other boys have too now that young man is a very wonderful intelligent stand up compassionate righteous godly young man now if you first met him he was nothing but expressing the demonic nothing but but there was a core that was salvageable and i don't know with the demonic how it works i don't know if there's a salvageable core but i do know that the only time i see deliverance working is when the humans who are doing it have embraced love without condition or the christic when they have embraced that road and when they embrace that road they themselves become a conduit for the power of spirit now these children of course are oppressed by entities when they are coming in etc but they are salvageable but only through love only through love and i can share this that the only time that i was unable to love those children the wind right now is blowing and my face is feeling it is the wind blowing at me is it doing it to me or is it just a movement in nature of course it's just a movement in nature as i am as i am speaking to you i'm a movement in this generous heart and its unity field of creation which is god's heart but that wind is just merely with the face is the wind blowing on the face is the face receiving the wind or is my mind moving and that just is the truth is it is the mind moving and that just is the leaves are not blowing on the tree 
The leaves are not moving in the wind, the wind are not moving the leaves. My mind is moving and your mind is moving, determining which it is, it is. When a child is behaving like that, it simply is. And it is not personal. Now, when they do it and they do betray you or they hurt you or they steal from you, which happens, has happened a lot over the years, they're not doing it to you. And only when the mind makes it personal can you not love them. This is the interesting thing. In the same way the mind is wondering if the wind's moving or the leaf and it just is, the child just is in pain and suffering and, and it's, it's coming out and it's coming outward and whoever's in the way is in the way. And that's just it. It just is. But if you feel they've stolen from and you make a centre point inside you, a me, then you shut off from the capacity of that love that knows no condition. And the reason you shut off is you separate from unity by making a meanness, a, a, a little poor victim in the centre that's been attacked by the world. And this is the problem with all anxiety and depression. We are all making a personal meanness and a story in our mind of this meanness being a victim. I know, I have done this a long time ago, more than 20 years ago, I was severely depressed and took an overdose due to that meanness. So I know, I don't speak without experience. And so when these boys were attacking, if you stayed without creating a center in yourself, you could love them for you acknowledged it was like the wind. And beyond there, you acknowledged that the only way to get them through this was love. But if they did it to you and you felt it, you felt hurt by it, because you make it personal, you make it about you, you can't bring that love because you separate from unity. It's the same notion of analyzing and creating an analyzer. Observing observer, victim of the wind blowing on your face. No, you don't have to do that. You don't have to. And so, to this degree, when you deal with the demonic, Yeshua said that you should love your enemy. I don't think he has a standard for you that they don't hold in the heavens. And therefore, you have to presume that somewhere God loves the adversary. God loves Satan. Perhaps God knows that there's a salvageable core here that can be reunited with him. Who knows? But if we are to love our enemy, God must love his. It's just a fact. It has to be. There won't be a standard for us of such a profound love if that standard's not with God. And so in the presence of a demon, bring love. In the presence of an adversary, bring love. Now, if you interpret demon, there's three ways to do it before I end this video. One is an energy inside of you that's a bad habit, and you can call that a demon. You must love that out of yourself, it's true. Then you have disembodied sentient life that has no body, and it seeks to possess a human to fulfill its perversion. And then you have sentient life that has a body and seeks to feed off the energy of humans or use them to indulge in the 3D without having to live here permanently. This is how I perceive it. No matter which you face off with, you need to be able to pick up your sword because you as a natural person cannot deal with these problems. The spirit can. The spirit of the Christic, the, the love of God, it can wash them away. And it will. And it can. And so to that degree, face your demons in love. But you can reject and condemn and be aggressive against their activities. You can love a demon and completely dislike everything about its behavior. But when you do it that way, you stay in the frequency of the power of Christ. And when you choose to hate, you generate that frequency inside you and it's like keeping acid in a cup. It only corrodes you. That's why you must be slow to anger. You don't want to open up this inside your energy factory of your body. So come at it all with love. 
And what feels best? What feels better inside you today as a man or a woman? Does it feel better to love your enemy inside of you? Or does it feel better to hate them and be all tense? That's your feedback system. That's the truth. Stay in love. There you will have tolerance and patience and there you can be aggressive and pick up your sword and deal the blow. But you won't weaken yourself by taking the shield away, which is that expansive state of thanksgiving that we should live within when we mimic the generous heart of God, which pours forth through us for the love with which we love is the love we are. That was all. God bless, guys. Be well. A father's teachings, a mother's love, a belly full of nourishing food, a warm bed to crawl into. Half a million children living in the streets of Tanzania find themselves without these human needs. Some lose their parents to illness. Some run away due to domestic violence. Others are lured in by the many false promises and temptations of the streets. During the night, without any barrier between the children and the ever watchful streets, they are vulnerable. The streets will relentlessly test these children and put demands on them that will taint their innocent hearts, painting a warped view of reality in ways that could lead to an abyss filled with the darkest human experiences imaginable. Too often, when a child seeks comfort from an adult in the streets, sexual and physical abuse, grooming and drug use follow suit. Eventually, children often adopt the same immoral views and behavior as a the group they find themselves around, becoming perpetrators of the very same abuse they themselves experienced. Other children, who manage to dodge this vicious abusive cycle, often find themselves laboring long hours in the scorching sun, they can be found in mines and quarries, working up to 10 hours a day, breaking up stones with hammers and selling them to local traders for as little as 10 cents a day. Others can be found in landfill sites, scavenging for anything of value they can get their hands on to sell and get by. The International Labor Organization estimates that 22,000 children die in child labor each year. 31 million out of the 71 million African child laborers work at high-risk jobs. Many orphanages and centers for street children in Tanzania have failed due to poor management and violence towards children by the staff, leading children to run back to the streets. In the pursuit of finding a solution to this crisis, Angels Gate's Center for Street Involved Children was created thanks to a wonderful family from London who decided to donate after watching one of our videos about these boys. This is how desperate these children are. That to be sexually abused becomes a normal everyday job. And since then, many other generous humans connected to our cause and decided to share with these boys. Angels Gate's goal is to use love, education and rehabilitation to heal deep-seated trauma and give these boys the best chance of finding happiness and success in life. We have dedicated men who we refer to as big brothers, as role models and caregivers for these boys who have often lacked a male role model in their lives. The relatability and empathy these men bring allow the boys to open up much easier to express their trauma through open dialogue and even art, allowing the healing process to start in a safe environment. Angels Gate is now home to 50 street-involved children who are provided with ongoing counseling, home and or in school education, medical care and 24-hour access to our on-site big brothers and caregivers. The Angels Gate outreach team scout the streets in search of boys to help. We then explain our unique setup and how our center will benefit these children. If the child agrees to come live with us, the onboarding process begins and the child moves in shortly after. Due to missing school and education, many of these boys get to learn how to read and write privately for the first time with our on-site teachers and when they are ready, they are sent to school, often for the first time in their lives. Amaya keku is a serious, Amaya mona again the beach, Amaya keku is a serious, Amaya mona again the beach. 
mona wo kwe ale cha kwe kwe nambale Unlike the more institutionalized approach, Angel's Gate makes itself highly desirable to children by prioritizing fun activities every child loves, such as art, sports, and music production in particular, has become a huge part of Angel's Gate's success. Our big brothers also instill important life skills and discipline through daily tasks around the home such as gardening, washing and cooking. All of these boys arrived with no money. Angel's Gate therefore focuses on vocational training in various professions for the older boys who are getting ready for their professional lives. And this has led to many success stories. Many of our boys have become entrepreneurs, mechanics, welders, carpenters, tour guides and much more. Sleep around the corner in the street was so sad But you bring a shelter today We been used to cry but I was mine Cause you bring me back in life on again Lucy my hope was fine There was no light Now you light in my life on again We been used to cry but I was mine Cause you bring me back in life on again the twinkle in their eyes as they dance and laugh sends a loud message to the world that brotherhoods like this has the capacity to transform tremendous suffering, abuse and neglect into a faint memory of a past life. A dark past that no longer has the power to keep them away from pursuing their newfound dreams of an abundant and happy life. And if you feel called to partner with us, visit www.sharetanzania.co.uk forward slash angels dash gate dash center to learn how you can impact the life of a child in need today. Thank you so much for watching and God bless.